these Mozart water-based brush markers. And these look strikingly like the Neo Pico 4s. So I'm gonna unwrap these for you guys here and then I'm gonna go grab some other water-based markers that are very comparable and we'll take a look. So I ordered these off of Amazon and you can check the description below for the link. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull these up so I can see how much they cost. And these were $17.99 with Prime. There is a $24.99 scratch out because they want me to believe that these are $24.99 markers, which, you know, as always, I have my doubts. They come in this reusable plastic case. And I don't know if I can open them because it's like the belly band fused permanently with the lip, but I think I've got it. And I think those of you who read the blog and watch this channel know that I do indeed appreciate reusable cases. So like we have discussed, oh my gosh, there is a tray in our case. So there, that's a thing. I mean, that does make removing the markers a little bit easier. Um, so I am going to go ahead and pull out some comparable Mark, uh, markers, watercolor markers, uh, individual bristled markers, what have you. And we'll take a look at these. So we have the Mozart brush tips. We've got some Neo Pico 4s. We've got a Koi coloring brush. We've got a Zig clean color real brush. And we've got two Ranger distress markers. Now I have reviewed these on the blog. I've reviewed this here and on the channel and maybe also on the blog. I've talked about these on the blog and on the channel. And I've reviewed these fully on the blog. So if you are interested in those, the URL you want is natosoup.blogspot.com and there's a little search bar at the top and you just type the name of the marker you're looking at. And there should be a review for these on there eventually. So we're gonna go ahead and do a lineup. So this does not have any sort of a clip on it. it does have a posting cap and there is very little information on the body of the pin, which seems to be pretty dang typical for these inexpensive sort of pins. And I wish I could pull out an Akashi Asai because I've reviewed those as well, but I have since rehomed them and I have not replaced them. So you're just gonna have to use your imagination if you so desire. But my dear friend Heidi Black swears up and down that the size are pretty much ex identical to the Neo Pico 4s. I do have my doubts as to that, which is one of the reasons why I really want to get my hands on another set so I can find out for sure. But she works at JetPins and she has access to both. So I guess you guys should probably believe her. Now, the only markers in this lineup that are double-sided are the Distress markers. All of these have a brush tip. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I can't get too much in for you guys. The three over here to the left have individual nylon bristles. Um, depending on what sort of art you do, what sort of stamping you do, what sort of card making you do, you may like that, you may not like that. Um, these two over here have semi-flexible um, firm tips. The I do believe the Koi coloring brush has a foam. Nope, it's a fiber nib. So they're both fiber nibs. Um, on the Zig Art and Graphic Twin, which is not shown here, but has been reviewed both on this channel and on the blog, those have a foam, uh, not foam rubber tip and that's my favorite to work with. And if you are a calligrapher or a hand letterer watching this video to see if these are right for you, hello, welcome. Hopefully this will prove helpful for, for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap all of these and I will get back to you guys with the swatch test. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the swatch test on some Strathmore mixed media paper. This is the same paper that I use for most of my alcohol marker tests. Often when I work with water-based markers, I also work with watercolor paper. So I am going to grab some of that and I guess we're gonna do a wet swatch test and a dry swatch test. And we're gonna start with the dry swatch test. Test. 
we're going to do the swatch test on fluid watercolor paper using a water brush for dilution. so far so good with these Mozart brush pins. There are a couple more things I'm going to want to test for. I'm going to want to test to see if they can be reactivated after a long period of um, or a longer drying period because I know that's important to some people. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry for a long time and spritz it with water and we'll see if that affects it as well. And the reason I'm testing for these is it those properties will affect whether or not you can really handle these the way you would watercolor markers. So I am just going to lay a few down here on this watercolor paper and I'm going to step away for at least an hour, maybe even overnight, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna try to reactivate it. So you see these three down here? Those are the three we're gonna be testing. All right, guys, so I let these markers dry overnight. We're going to go ahead and use a water brush and I'll zoom in for y'all. And so far the orange reactivates without too much problem. Let's try the green. Green seems to reactivate as well. And for the purple, okay. So our three test colors reactivate quite well. Let's try and um, smear something that's already had water to it. Because if you guys watch my fountain pen swatch videos, you'll know that often ink, once it's had water added to it, no longer stays water reactive. This, however, is still mildly water reactive. So that would be something you'd want to keep in mind if you're using these as watercolor markers. So finally, final test. I said I was going to spray this down. We'll see how much the color moves. So I'll see you again really soon. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.